Bonjour, hola, hello everyone, hello. Uh, I'm not saying it properly, probably like some Yiddish sounding uh, welcome. Oh my God, every time I start welcoming everyone on this wonderful podcast, I have to improvise and make such a mess out of this. I am Sebastian, one of your co-hosts. This is a new episode of todebate.eu or .net, whichever you prefer. And in front of me on this wonderful video hangout, I have Dirk, how are you today? I am very good, and you're not making that much of a mess, I can tell you. Hang on, we've just started. You haven't seen me finish yet, the podcast. <laughs> Are you at home right now? Uh, I am actually at home. Uh, the reason why I'm at home is because, uh, you know, there could be strikes at, at times, and these strikes could disrupt the train I am taking. Luckily, in Switzerland, uh, there's not so many strikes, but strikes could always happen. And what a coincidence! What is our emotion today? What a today? perfect transition. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm, I'm like so good at this improvisation. Today's motion, guess what? Ban strikes that disrupt the lives of end users. So typically, uh, you know, a train uh, driver who would be on strike would disrupt my life. Uh, so that's a crazy coincidence that we're debating on that today. Okay, so two minutes for me with my arguments against banning. Starting now. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. Let's uh, remind our listeners that I am French. So I do know something about strikes. Uh, so I come with some experience in terms of strikes in a number of services, including public services. And here's the thing. Even though I have suffered quite a bit from these train strikes in particular, and airline strikes also, including today, even though I'm no longer living in France, but I do take a French airline, uh, and they also go on strike very repeatedly, I have to admit that it's a necessary evil. And the thing is, if these strikes were banned, then they the, the workers would have no way of really expressing their discontent in whatever they are arguing for or, or asking for. And if strikes were taking a different format with that disrupting the lives of the customers, then they would probably go unnoticed and nobody would really care. So that's why I'm saying it's a necessary evil. It's always the same debate anyway about one freedom of being able to strike, stopping at the boundaries of the freedom of other people, i.e. being able to go to work. But let's not forget one thing. And even though I say this as someone who has suffered from strikes, these people who go on strike do not get paid. They are doing things. They're not doing things to annoy people on purpose. It is really sometimes, and most often, in fact, the last resort option. And what's the alternative anyway? There's no really alternative. Like, imagine you're a train driver or an airline pilot. I mean, what can you do when you go on strike except but not drive the train or, or, or ride the, 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 the plane? If he's on strike but forced to drive, then the company is operating just as if no strike was happening. Uh, now, the compromise that some countries have come up with is this notion of minimum service. But in this case, it's panic on the train platforms because there's one train out of three, out of four in the day. So everyone's crammed into the train. It's actually more dangerous than anything else. Or who gets to be served first? So here's the thing. Maybe one alternative that some countries have experienced is like Canada to use temporary workers uh, when, when the regular workers go on strike. And ha ha has actually shown that this is not making tension rise in the company because you actually have some kind of service, but it's not a permanent solution and it's costly for the company anyway. So for a number of reasons, and I can go into more details, obviously, I think there is no reason to ban those strikes, even though it is disruptive. I am not going to neglect that aspect. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. So what are the alternatives anyway? was one of the things you decided to say twice because uh, clearly you were not able to think of any. But there are plenty of alternatives because there are plenty of jobs that seem to do just fine without the right to strike. In cases where actually the profession is critical to society, we have an accepted ban on strikes. Official workers, for instance, depending on what profession they're in, are not allowed to strike. And what is the alternative? a structured, agreed-on path that guarantees growth in job and increase in security and what have you. Uh, if you're a doctor, you're not going on strike. You're, you're working because, uh, because the livelihood of people depends on it. 
And I argue that uh, the livelihood of societies depend often on public transportation, on infrastructure in general, and that it becomes very quickly out of balance if you disrupt the entire infrastructure in order to what? Improve uh, your salary for one or two percent? The cost alone to society usually outweighs massively the cost to your employer. And often these things are repeated affairs. So sometimes I wonder, you say you're French, you have experience with strikes. Indeed, it sometimes feels like I'm getting, I'm getting to France about once every quarter. And it feels like whenever I go to France, there's a strike and I can pick my battle. Is it a strike in the train system? Uh, are, are the, the, the plane pilots striking or is there some strike on ground control or what have you? There is even in our company, there is even a calendar circulated where I can look up strike dates and they are always transportation. So it's very, very disruptive. I would argue for society, it's a massive burden and more expensive than what it's worth. And often it's not resulting in the desired end result. So instead of improving their situations, often workers suffer through layoffs. Because you know what? If you, if you, one potential solution to having your people on train services striking all the time is automated train services. Another potential solution is um, having less trains circulating and those that are going on strike being replaced by temporary workers. So I'm not even convinced that strikes often result in what the people that are striking hope they would result in. So no, strikes in public transportation need to be banned. It's more disruptive, more painful, more expensive than what it's worth. And it's not bringing the result people hope it would. <laughs> Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. To your first point about some jobs uh, being already regulated and not having the right to strike, I am not actually advocating anything else. Uh, I'm, it's much more difficult, much more difficult when people already have a freedom and you want to take it away from them. So I'd rather focus on that aspect. You're saying in some cases or in most cases, it's about getting the salary improved by one or two percent. Actually, this is not always the case, not just about salary, it could be a status that people have had for the past 40 years, for instance, uh, as is the case for the public train transportation system in France. Uh, there's a specific railway status, which is being discussed to go away. And that's not easy for employees to accept because it is so generous uh, in terms of pension, in terms of healthcare, in terms of other, other benefits. So this is, which is something which is understandably difficult to swallow. Uh, even though the company may be losing money, but at the individual employee level, you never want to lose the benefits that you have acquired or your or previous trade, un trade unions or pre previous generations have acquired on your behalf. It is true that it is more costly uh, to the company in the end, and maybe they don't even get what they want, the employees or the trade unions. However, that's not an excuse to ban strikes. I think in this situation of strikes, which again, I'm pretty certain everyone would agree is a last result option, everyone loses. The worker doesn't get paid. Maybe they don't even get what they want. The company loses even more money. The brand of the company suffers quite quite a bit. I mean, that, I have friends who are not French who tell me for various reasons, are you taking Air France or Air Chance? I mean, it makes me laugh every time, but the, it's also for security concerns. But this is, anyway, I, I'm bringing it up, bringing it up in, the, in this case. But it, 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 my, my basic premise here is that everyone loses in, in that aspect. So I agree with you. It's costly. But it's costly for everyone. I'll come back to that point in a, in a minute. Um, automation. Well, yes, this is a part solution. We're going towards that automation. We'll still require people for some part of the uh, automated train aspect. But there, uh, we have an automated train line, uh, metro line in Paris. And indeed, when it strikes, it still works. So um, you know, this is going to solve part of the problem. But it's not banning strikes again, which is the main purpose of this uh, of this debate. Now, what we could enforce. Uh, is to have some negotiation happening because in some cases people don't want to talk to each other. So maybe what we could do, it's a half a joke, but you know, ban companies who don't know how to negotiate with trade unions or employees directly, uh, not saying that it's only the management team which does not know how to negotiate. Sometimes it is a trade union which becomes a little bit violent. And we have seen this also in France. But I think the thing is by banning a strike, I, I actually do believe it would result in more violent methods. For instance, things which are illegal, such as locking in effectively taking hostage the management team within the offices 
it's illegal, but very effective uh, from a media perspective. Not sure it benefits the trade union, but what is certain is that it creates more tension than necessary. So if you ban something, you can be certain that even if it's banned and illegal, people will still do it. And it will be create even more tension than if you had actually regulated things, for instance, by saying, you know what, the company may it may cost you more, but just hire temporary drivers, right? And just let the, the let the service run normally, but the regular employees are on strike. So overall, I don't think banning is actually uh, an effective an effective solution. Even if it's on the surface, it may look like helping end users. And now on to Dirk. So a couple of things here. You mentioned an alternative just yourself, and that's legal proceedings. I don't see why going on strike is the only way to fight against something that you don't like to see happening in your work environment. The other thing is, often the assumption is that uh, companies are uh, changing things like status just because they can. That's often not the case. There have been examples of uh, businesses going out of business because employees striked uh, too much and caused losses. So yes, there are alternatives, no, ma no matter how often you say there is no alternative. And uh, maybe regulating them and suggesting them is in order because we disrupt the lives of so many people that actually have nothing to do with the thing that's being fought over. There is one, so uh, one thing if, like you and me, we are business travelers. Honestly, it is annoying to run into strikes every once in a while and it certainly costs money, but I don't actually care that much. I factor that in. If I have to go to Paris and I learn that there is a strike, well, then I go next week. It's, it's fine. But what if that's your family vacation and you saved up for that and just because your pl plane got on strike, you're not leaving and you have one week, but uh, well, there's two days of strike and your your vacation is gone. Um, if you if you're try to get to a hospital really, really quick and train is on strike and traffic is standing, I would argue all these disruptions go way beyond just being something we have to tolerate because there's some change in the lives of the train operators, the plane pilots or what have you happening. Stuff like transportation is on the same level like uh, power, like telephone services, like uh, health services. We wouldn't tolerate if the power provider just turns off the power because they go on strike. Neither should we tolerate if the train service goes out of service because somebody thinks that they are treated unfairly over pension. There should be a legal proceeding for that. There should be an alternative way to, to make yourself heard. It shouldn't go uh, as something on the backs of people. Um, I'm as a passenger. I have no beef with the uh, operators or with the companies operating it. And I have no choice either. No matter what it does to the reputation of the train service in Paris, I have to take it if I'm in Paris. And uh, I don't really care who is operating it. I just notice that it's not running when I'm there. So yes, it should be banned. It's a vital service. It's something that when it's when it's on strike disrupts too many people and it's usually not reaping the results that people hope it would. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. You don't care about who is operating the train exactly. You don't care. It doesn't have to be the person on strike. It can be a replacement worker, which is what I'm offering here, which is going to be costly for the company costly for the employees on strike because they're not going to get paid, but they're effectively keeping their right to strike. The problem if we ban it is if we go back, let's say two centuries or three centuries ago, if you let the free market reign, you have things like the slave trade. You maximize profits. The worker has no say, has no right. Now, this is an extreme example of two or three centuries ago, but it's exactly the same way today. Workers would get exploited if they have no way of saying, hang on, My last resort option is to say, you know what? I am not working for you. I'm a, I'm a full-time employee. I, I refuse to get my salary in exchange. I will not go to work because this is we have not been able to negotiate. That does not prevent the company to be obliged to its minimum service or full-time service for its end users by hiring temporary workers during the period of the strike. It's a necessary evil to keep the freedom of the regular employees for them to be, to be able to go on strike. So for all these reasons and all the reasons I have mentioned before, I don't think banning strikes, even if they disrupt the lives of end users, is something that we should consider. Dirk, let's hear it. 
The alternative you offer is simply not realistic. Because you know what? In a city like Paris or Frankfurt or Berlin or what have you, there are not like a thousand train drivers sitting around just to wait for the next strike in order to be paid as temporary workers. Although in Paris, I would argue maybe you can make a living that way. I'm not really sure, but uh, I have to think about that. Um, that's the whole point about a strike. You're striking that way because it causes pain and because the company usually has no other way around than to at least partially see service. And that's what produces the cost. Because if you just could replace uh, train drivers with temporary workers, well, then, yeah, it becomes an exercise in paying a little bit more. But in reality, that's not what happens. And it's not for a lack of wanting, I assume. So this is not really an alternative. Infrastructure like telephony, power support, transportation are so critical to our society that we need to protect it. And we, yes, maybe need to protect it by providing legal support, by providing a guarantee for certain things. Uh, maybe that's the side uh, where we as a society want to pay more. But I would really strongly argue for banning strikes because they are more disruptive than beneficial. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening, as usual. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. You wouldn't believe what I just realized. What is it? Um, I seriously prepared the wrong side. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it had to happen. It I'm, had to happen. I'm, I'm for... Yeah. I'm uh, When I look over my arguments... I'm actually against banning. Nice. I love the <laughs> it could be a market in France <laughs> about replacing workers. That was a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually you know calculate the mathematical optimum. Like, you know, if you get like if you let's say you go half of the of the year on strike, you have like you could double the number of jobs basically <laughs> for all that. Yeah, the same right. is true for London, I think. <laughs> Obviously, the, way, the the civilized way of striking in most European countries is uh, right. something that's a bit of a compromise already. So, um, it's th true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just dropping everything and go in the middle of the service would be an interesting escalation. Actually, France is a myth. There's actually maybe it has changed over the past 15 years, uh, but actually the Danish and the and the Scandinavians were usually striking more often. And the reason for that is because trade unions were actually more powerful mm -hmm. in, uh, in in the Scandinavian countries than in France. One argument I would have brought that you didn't. <laughs> Go ahead. You prepared it, you know. Yeah, I prepared it. I have to say it. I would have made the argument that strikes improve the situation for everyone, including the passengers. Because uh, strikes sometimes are about safety regulation, having proper breaks uh, and all that. Vacation that's, times. That's just in Germany. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> Argument being made. Yes, yes, you have a point. If the train driver sits in the same train cart as the the user, probably yes. it's good that this guy is not an alcoholic who hasn't had a time to sleep because he has to work three shifts to make a living. You want that guy to be well fed and rested. I agree. You never know, right? The train could like go on the highway instead of the train tracks. <laughs> <never know. laughs>